Hi guys, it's Blackie. Okay, today continuing in the percussion revolver series. I'm sorry about the gunfire, I'm out at the shooting range today because I'm doing some testing. Okay, in my percussion revolver, like you saw in my earlier videos, I've done a lot of experimentation over the years on the best way to carry the shells in the field. Okay? And over the years that's changed a little. But back in the 1980s or so, this was the way that I decided it was the best, most efficient way to carry it in the field. And this is one of those Dixie tubes that you see. It's got powder in it, then I've got one of the Wonder Wads, and then you squeeze the tube with your thumbnail, and it walks up the ball until it finally comes out, and that way I can load in the field. These are very robust and are not very, you know, they can handle rough handling in a pocket. And it made it where I could reload and just carry a capper then with me. Well, that's my preferred method. But so many of you, my followers, have come up and said, Blackie, I want to use cap I want to use a, a paper cartridge. Can you go back and do some more on paper cartridge? You did a thing on paper cartridge a couple years ago. Can you bring it up more? Can you do more? More, more, more. Okay, guys, we're gonna redo the experiments. How about that? So, we're gonna start with each of the components that we can possibly improve or make in a percussion revolver. So let's start with the basic here, the lubricant, the wad. Now, I use boar butter. That's my preferred stuff made by Thompson Center. Um, they brought this out years ago and it was a real game changer for me when used in my flint locks and etc and especially in my revolvers because it didn't foul up easy. Now let's discuss fouling a moment. Back in the day when we would shoot in competitions it was a common problem with our rifles or Hawkins or whatever to have it where you would load it, you would shoot and before the end of the match you were having trouble loading because what would happen would be the Petroleum-based oils we were using, which was everything from machine oil, motor oil, transmission fluid, diluted axle grease. Guys came up with some wild combinations, but they were all petroleum. And how does a diesel engine work? Well, you add a lot of compression, you spurt something combustible in there, and poof, you've got an explosion. Well, that's true as well as a muzzle loader. You would put oil a petroleum of some form in there and it would build up because you're utilizing it you'd wipe the board down and it would ignite due to the compression and bam of the explosion and burn and leave this hard fouling inside of the barrel what do you get when you burn rubber you get tar what do you burn when you brew, uh, what do you get when you burn crude oil tar and that's what you got inside the bore and that was hard to scrub out so when they came up with this, which was kind of based on the old natural lubes that back in the day was tallow and beeswax. That was always the go-to and that seemed to be the number one other than bear grease, okay? It worked very well and it seasoned the bore and made the bore slick. It means it didn't build up that fouling and this did not burn in the combustion like petroleum's did, okay? Well, a lot of people tried variations of it, and the thing is beeswax and tallow. Let's look at that a second. Tallow is a waxy type of fat that is not, so to speak, greasy. It's more like a wax, okay? And then beeswax. Why beeswax? Beeswax had the highest melting point of natural waxes. It's 400 and something degrees, as opposed to 100 and something degrees for paraffin wax. And so it didn't get soft, it stayed in position, and etc. So let's bring it up to the modern day. As you follow my channel and remember in my percussion revolver series where I did my shooting paper cartridges, and I showed putting a couple of drops, little bitty beads of soy wax down into my pre-made up cartridges because I found it added a little bit of lubricant. And if you've not seen that video, here's a link to the video right here. Okay, that was not um, standard, not petroleum, paraffin, paraffin wax. Sorry guys, having an old age moment. 
It was not paraffin wax, it was soy wax. And soy wax has a different melting property and etc. And I found it worked good as a lubricant. So looking at that today, I got to thinking. For three dollars, they got these candles at Walmart. And it's the in-house brand, you know, made in the U.S. And I looked at all the stats upon it, and it doesn't say it's soy wax. But it doesn't act like paraffin wax. Now, I know it's got some sort of oil in it or something for the scent. But it dries, and here it is in 90 degrees, and it's still solid. Okay? Yet, when I crush it, it's soft. And more than that, when I crush it and rub it between my fingers, it leaves a fine, slick, oil-like coating. Now, I did an experiment where I took that and I put it between my fingers. And that didn't wash my hands. I just did my usual truck chores. And an hour or so later, I'd come back and rub and see, did it still have a slick feel to it? Does it wear off easy? It didn't. I could wash it off easy. Hot water would get rid of it. But at the same time, it lubricated. And that's what I wanted to know. Because there's no sense experimenting with this if it's not going to do the most basic job. It's got to act as a lubricant. Okay? So I got me one of these. And I decided to do a test. Now, if this is, in fact, some kind of wax like soy wax, I don't even got to know the name of it as long as the property is there. Okay? If it works like soy wax, if it has the consistency that it will remain semi-soft, where I can crush it and wad it up and it doesn't just crumble to dust at standard temperatures, that whenever it gets really hot, it doesn't burn easily, and that seems to be the case here because of active flame and it doesn't soot a lot. Soot indicates there's problems. There's very little or no soot out of these candles. And that's something that's kind of refined. So is this a refined wax of some form that I can utilize in my cap and ball revolvers? So to test out this theory, I took this and I lit it up and I let it melt out a pool in the middle of it. And then I went and took a 100% cotton pad. This is like the ones you get for the ladies to take off makeup. And I soaked it in it, a single fit thickness and a double thickness. And then I let it dry, and then I cut it out. Now, let's talk about this. Next step of those Wonder Watts. Why do they use beeswax? Well, it's high melting point, and it remains firm in temperature. Why do they use tallow? Because it's got that lubricating slick type property to it and yet won't dry out easily, okay? Why do they use wool? Because you always see when you're making them felt wads, why use wool? Because it doesn't burn easy, okay? Now, uh, in his book Six Guns, Elmer Keith talks about using old hats to cut it up and to make it. You saturate it in the tallow beeswax mixture and then use a punch and make wads to go into his cabin ball revolvers. That's been done a long, long time. So, why don't we use cotton? Well, I can tell you from first-hand experience where we were doing muzzle loaders for demonstration purposes and we are going to be shooting blanks. So we just took newspaper and wadded it up real tight and shoved it down the bore and packed it real good and hard on our flintlock 62 calibers. And we shot. And it ignited and burned and landed. We had to run down there and stomp it out before we started a brush fire. So, what I'm about to show you, there's a disclaimer. You, you have to test this in your environment, in your conditions. I live in Alabama where it's high humidity. Those of you that are on the west coast, a single spark and this thing burns up. So, before you go make up these wires and you run out back and start shooting them to find out do I like them or not, make sure that this thing doesn't ignite in your environment. Here in mine, it does not. But in yours is the question, how dry your air is and etc. Be aware of that. You don't want to put a burning cinder that used to be this rod that's now ignited and gone 20 yards over yard and land in that grass to start a forest fire. So do experiments in a controlled environment, someplace open where you can see where it lands. Does it smoke? Does it keep burning? Can I pick it up and blow on it and fan it like a coal and does it ignite? 
If so, that's a eh, forget it. We ain't even gonna go there, okay? But in my environment, this doesn't. So, back to. I took those pads, and those are the ones that you pick up for 97 cents for 100 of them, and I get 10 wads out of every card. That's pretty good. Considering 100 Wonder Wads run about, um, 100 Wonder Wads run you about $10. So about 10 cents a piece. That's good savings. Now, Blackie, where do you get the punches? These are the punches. I picked up an entire set of these from Harbor Freight for $8. It's got like five punches in it. Um, this one is 7 sixteenths. That's the 44 caliber. And this one is 3 eighths. That's the 36 caliber one that you want to keep in mind. I'm sure you can order a higher quality punch offline, but 7 sixteenths for 44 caliber, 3 eighths for the 36 caliber. Now, how to punch these out. You need that cutter to cut it, not just shove it down. So it's got to be something hard underneath it. But if you put down something like a really hard piece of wood, every time you hit, yes, it'll cut, but it's going to put a dent. And you got to constantly move around, otherwise that dent makes it where it just smears it. It's going down in a hollow rather than cutting it. So you need a surface. So I've got a little bitty small anvil, but you can't use punches onto steel. Steel on steel will dull it. One hit, you're dull. So I want to cut it without damaging it. So I need a barrier. And I thought about, hey, a cutting board would work. So I went looking for a thin cutting board. Something I could sit up there that was a hard but flexible plastic that it would cut through and then leave me this punched out, but not automatically destroy the cutting board. So I got a long life out of the cutting board. And what did I find? A dog frisbee. I've cut out about 200 wads out of it thus far. And you can see the little circles in it. Doing just fine. The other side's fine. It doesn't dull my cutter. And I'm able to lay it up there, put my cutter up there, and go clunk, and I use a small mallet. That's it. That's how we produce them. Now, the wads. I'm experimenting today with single and double thickness. Okay. Does it make a difference? So, this is a single thickness. This one is a double thickness. I punch these out, let them cool, uh, let them rest overnight, make sure they wasn't hinky. I put them out in the car during the day, let them get hot. Did they melt? Did they whatever? No, they didn't. Did they, when I put them in the freezer and I froze them, when I went to bear down on them, did they crumble in cold winter conditions? No, they didn't. So far, so good. So now we're to the part of actually trying them out again. Now, I've already shot in another gun. I haven't shot in this one. So this will be the first time with this. We're going to be using my Remington. So let me set up the camera, and we're going to load up right quick, and we'll see how it goes. Stay with me. Okay. We're going to be shooting 454 lead ball. We're going to be utilizing my 58 Remington Sheriff. Ooh, I got that thing on the top now. So it's been flicked up and ready to go. The load I'm going to be using is going to be 32 grains of Pyrodex P. Two grains Pyrodex P. I'm going to be using the double thickness wads. And we're going to shoot three of them. So. Put the 
powder in. Dump in. Now the way you start these wads is don't try to put them in flat. Okay? Turn them up and down, straight up and down. You want to sit it on there like that. Okay? Then you want to push away from you and it'll drop in flat, just like that. Now ram her down. Just like that. Take my round ball. Index the sprue like I want. And ram it home. Okay. Now I have loaded her with, I've inched it up a little at a time till I'm at my full load, which is 34, 35 grains of Pirate X with those wads. I have shot repeatedly over the same hunk of ground, and there's no wind right here. If there's any smoke, I'm going to spot it. And that's the reason I'm doing it this way. I'm going to turn around, I'm going to show you me go up and shoot this next one so you can see what the terrain looks like. Okay, as you can see, I've got a great big bare area here. So any kind of cinder or smoldering whatever would show up. And that's what I'm looking for. When you're doing your test, do the same thing. Shoot it on something flat where I can see it. You don't want any leaves, any whatever. Now, you can do this at merely 10 or 12 yards. In fact, walk up close and shoot the first time at about 5 yards off the target and have a big piece of cardboard so the wad may stick into the cardboard or bounce back off and you'll be able to pick it and find it easier. Okay? Try that. Okay, she's got her full power hit. She's hitting where I'm asking her to. And the question is, what's the bore look like? Now, I'm about to run a patch through. I'll turn the camera down and run the patch through. And that's after five rounds of being fired with that wax wad. Let's see what the bore looks like. Because if it's not lubricating, there's no sense going any further. It needs to do lubrication so that its primary job is lubricating the bore and preventing chain fires. I could just use plain wax, but that doesn't lubricate. So I want to see what it will do with that. Alrighty. Base pin out. And I have one marked so I know the exact. I was shooting the same chamber and over and over again. That's the chamber. I don't see any telltale splatter ring right there of a lot of lubricant or anything. I wipe it with my finger, and it does smooth off, but it ain't bad. Now let's see what that chamber looks like. Very little fouling after five rounds of 30 grain of uh, 30 grain and now 35 grain the last two rounds relatively clean there's the patch relatively clean now let's see about the uh, bore Rifling is clearly visible. I don't see any buildup or anything like that. What you're looking for when you look down the bore, it should look like the bore. A little dirty, of course, but it shouldn't have clumps in it, you know, like rocks in a road. That would mean hunks or something are sticking behind, and that would be a bad thing. But I'm not seeing that. Okay. Skeetas are eating me alive down here, guys. 
Sally, the hurricane came through and it put torrential downpour down here in this part of the country. And every little ditch, every little coffee can, beer can, everything is now hatching out mosquitoes in droves. I'm one of them people that rarely ever gets bit and they're eating me alive. Right now through my t-shirt, they're landing on me and biting me. So, not bad for five shots. I don't see any telltale ring in the bore of fouling. Get down there and make sure I get all the way to the bottom. Bore looks good. I don't see any buildup at the pressure cone. Because anytime you're going to fire something under pressure through here, you run the possibility that it's going to do something you hadn't thought it would do, like cause a buildup, like cause a hang up of some kind. So we want to take these little baby steps in testing as we go. The forcing cone looks good. It doesn't have hunks of lube stuck to it. The gun hit to roughly where I was aiming as usual. I don't think it is changing my point of impact horribly. And I'm thinking with the full load, we're gonna be good. So, now I need to simply recite in the gun with these wads. I've tried on the other gun, which is my 1860 Army, the single ones. And I didn't like them as well. I think the way to go is the double. And all that is, is taking two of those little thin cotton face pads and putting them together. Now when you pull these out of here, that's one, okay? I put two of these together and soaked them in that wax and kept them pressed together. When I brought them out of the wax, that's whenever I Laid them, I let them cook, uh, drip. They're going to drip for quite a while. So pull them out and let all that will drip, drip off of them. Then lay them down on a flat surface. I put a piece of aluminum foil down on a cookie sheet. And then press them down flat with your hand to make sure they're kind of compressed. Okay? Next, after they've had time to fully dry and they're not in any way, that's when you take your cutter and you punch them out. So, I would say from a preliminary point of view that that candle wax can be used as a lubricant. It can be used as a um, wadding to make inside of it. Now how much is the cost? This candle was three dollars and thirty five cents. These were ninety nine cents for a hundred of them. I get at least 10 44 caliber wads out of it. I haven't counted the 36. But if that's 10 per, I'm doubling it, that'd be 500. That would be a, somewhere around 1,000, you know, because I'm getting two. That one here becomes 50. 50 times 10, 500, excuse me. I'm getting 500 wads for $3? $4? Yeah. That's a, that's a savings over uh, $10 for 100 of Wonder Wads. Now, you got to test them in your environment. I'm having no smokers, no nothing, none left laying there smoldering. And I did find one right here. Pick it up. This is after it hit the target board. And it flattened it out, that little smear right there. Okay. I went and looked at it carefully. It smells like gunpowder, but it is not burned. It isn't like it's smoldered. It's still, when I put it between my fingers and my thumb, I still get lubricant out of it. That's fine. Does it affect accuracy? We gotta find that out. Does it stick to the ball on the way down and doesn't come off until it hits the target? That will greatly affect accuracy because it'll be like a kite's tail. This apparently does not. It apparently it's sealing the bore. 
it's adding lubrication and it is not coming off. I mean, it is coming off, but it is not causing a problem either in the bore or the forcing cone or anything thus far. So now we do a little bit long term. Now, can I take that wax, put it in a double boiler, and heat it up until all this wax liquefies? Then grab and pull them wicks out of there. Now if I take that and I want to turn it into something creamy like board butter, could I add something like olive oil to it? Olive oil makes a good lubricant for black powder guns. Could I take and uh, add coconut oil or something to it? What ratio would I have to work out where it acted like boar butter? Where I could put it into one of these tubes, you know, take a hog inoculator, which is a big, you know, that thing you get for injecting stuff into your turkey. Don't put the needle on it. Could I put that mixture in here and then fill up one of these tubes again? Just blow air into it come in through the top and fill it up like they did at the factory. Could I then have refills? We'll see. That's on another channel. That's another experiment. But as it stands right now, yeah, success thus far. We're going to make wads. And I'll take you along next time I go to make some. I'll put the camera on. I'll show you punching out and how I do and how I organize them. Now that we've proven the basis, now we start experimenting, can I swing it a little bit that way? Could I add just a little bit of beeswax to that? Like I just said, liquefy the whole thing, and could I add like an ounce of beeswax to it and bring it up just a little? Could I add beeswax to it and use it as lubricant for my percussion revolver bullets, those Kato Ojamas? Could I fill up the groove rings and it do the job in it? That's the questions, and that's what we're going to be doing. So, hope you enjoyed this, guys. Please leave any questions or comments below. And this is the experiment phase. This is whenever we're going step by step at all this stuff and finding out. There are other things on the horizon. I've got uh, Mr. Wanniger's reloaders to make paper cartridges. And I've been making paper cartridges. We're going to do that and talk about how to make and carry paper cartridges in the field today to make this gun more viable in the field today. That's the game plan. Hope you enjoy this, guys. Hope it gives you some ideas. Please leave any questions or comments below. And until next time, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.